Hey everyone, welcome to Triple Eight Reviews. If this is your first time here. Hope you find the video useful. If you've been here before, welcome back. Either way, please like and subscribe. It really helps get our videos out there and helps the channel to grow. Today we're going to look at fixing fan noise on the Carbon X1. After a few days printing ABS with the Carbon X1, it developed this really loud fan noise inside. And today we're going to look at how do we fix this. Welcome to Triple Eight Reviews. After the noise developed, I turned the printer off for several days while I dealt with uh, Bambi Lab support to get a warranty claim in for a replacement fan. When I turned it back on, there was a new firmware update, 1.05.01. So I applied this fan update before I did the install of the new fan, the replacement fan. So the update takes about 10 minutes and when it was completed, the fan noise had stopped and found this a bit strange, although I had read somewhere that there was a fix for the fan in the latest firmware version. After looking up the firmware version on Bamboo Lab's website, the improvement turns off the fan when the tool head is not being moved and um, so this means that when the printer is not printing you won't hear the fan so this is what happened in this particular instance so nonetheless um, the fan was still broken and it was just turned off so I went ahead with the process of doing an install of a new replacement fan so we're going to remove the back cover we're going to remove the existing fan that's making the noise and we're going to replace it with a new fan. This fan is from Bamboo Labs directly, it's a spare fan. We'll install that, we'll test it, make sure that it works and potentially look at a custom replacement fan. The custom replacement fan is this. It's a Noctua fan with an adapter would sit somewhere in here. We'll see how that goes. We'll take a look at it and if that works out, we'll replace that too. And um, maybe get some better cooling on the main controller board. So that's the plan for today. We'll start off with removing the feeder, the PTFE tubes, the cabling, the back cover, the poop chute and then that'll get us in at that board. So there's two Allen keys needed. Two millimeter, 1.5 millimeter. These are nice handy ones from Amazon. Nice long stretch, so if you have to get into anything deep and convenient, much more convenient than the Allen keys that came with it. So we're gonna use these. So get the feeder off, there are two cables. This one goes to the AMS, this one goes to the printer itself and um, there's this tool available that you can print off on the bamboo labs itself and you can use this then to get in at these awkward clips that are at the back and remove like so and this makes it easier to pull those clips out so these are clips this place is over to push them in and help remove them. Now we'll remove the feeder itself. Push in, pull out the PTFE tube. So this is an adapter I put on for a poop shoot. Clips on like that. It's stick on, so unfortunately it also covers one of the screws we need, so we're gonna to need to take this off so that we can remove the screw in behind here.
It takes a little bit of fiddling to get this cover off. Uh, you just need to wiggle it to left to right and it'll come out. And that's the back cover off. If our pip shoot, our fan is in here. So this is the fan we're looking to get. If we were to do the adapted fan, it would sit in here basically, sitting on top of that and in behind here. So a bit more work to do. So we get stuck in and I'm going to remove the last pieces. And then we give this machine a clean up and we'll be good to go. So, okay. So, chamber fan, group shoot, our main board, main board fan, stepper motors, mains power in. We'll not touch that bit, um, we'll stay away from the power supply and um, we can suck in. Okay. First you've got to remove two screws on top. Be careful when you take them out. I did drop one of these and you cannot get replacements for them. There's also a screw up inside. Uh, you've got to remove this one as well. And then you should be able to just wiggle it free. Now there is a clip at the bottom tied to a cable. Uh, just use a pair of pliers and that will loosen that off and then you can remove the chute. Once the chute's off, there's two connectors underneath at the bottom of the motherboard, and then there's the heat sink. Uh, the heat sink has a lot of thermal paste on it, so be careful with it. Just put it somewhere safe, and then you can get access to the fan. Fortunately, I had an issue with my camera overheating, so I lost the video of us taking the fan out, but it really just needs a wiggle and pull. It's just stuck in with the sticker on the side. But as you can see, once the fan is out, there is some heat damage to the label on the front. So this potentially is the cause of the problem, was some form of heat damage to the fan during the process of doing the ABS printing. So let's unbox our replacement fan. So we'll take a look at the two fans, the old and the new beside each other. And as you can see, they're identical, same model number, same voltage ampage. It looks like the holes might be a little bit smaller on the new one, but ultimately they're identical fans. And you can see where the label is damaged on the old one versus the new one. So we'll take off the cover off the sticky tape and we'll place that back into the slot, just push it into place. And then we've got to feed the cable around the main controller board and get it back to its slot and connect it in. It is a little bit awkward. And it is a tight space to work in, but it is doable and uh, it's fairly safe to do. So once you've got that, you've got to push all the connectors back into place. I decided at this point I wasn't going to bother with the custom fan because it just looked like it was too much hassle and realistically the replacement fan that I have should work fine. It shouldn't require any more work. We put the heatsink back on. Obviously be careful about all that thermal paste. Uh, it can be a bit messy. So two screws. Just check all the connectors are in tight. Now we can fit the chute back in place. Obviously I was missing a screw, so um, I can only put two screws in to hold it, but it'll hold it pretty well. There's also the screw that goes into the back case that'll keep it in place, so it's not going anywhere. 
Next, we put the back cover back on again. Now, the tensioner slots are a little bit awkward to get around to get the uh, get the back cover back on. It needs to slot into both, one on each side. So when we finished putting the back back on, um, also decided to upgrade the feeder for the AMS for future use for additional AMSs and also put back on my shoot bin for the, the poop shoot. But overall, it was a successful install. Everything worked fine after I tested it. No issues with printing. But in any case, you're not gonna hear the fan causing any noise because it's gonna turn off every time the print head stops moving. So does this fix the issue overall? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, obviously, heat can damage the main controller. Um, we obviously want to make sure that we don't damage the main controller board, but we'll keep an eye on it. But for now, everything sounds fine. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.